Hello again, how are you doing? I hope you were happy with how you did the use of English practice exercise from last lesson about Wimbledon. And now you're ready to look at part four of the use of English. Just to remind you one more time, there are seven parts altogether in the reading and use of English paper in total. And you have one hour and 15 minutes to complete it. So, moving on to part four, the key word formations. Now, in part three, we transformed and changed words. In part four, we're going to change and rephrase sentences. Don't forget to make sure you have your notebook and pen or a text document open so that you can make a note of any new vocabulary and any information and techniques that will be useful for you in the exam. So, this is what part four looks like. There are two big differences between part four and the previous parts, one, two, and three. In this part, there are six separate sentences, not one complete text. The sentences are not connected. Another difference is each question here is worth a maximum of two marks. In parts one, two and three, each correct answer gets you only one mark. Let's look at the instructions you will see in the exam. You have two sentences and there's a word in bold. The second sentence has a gap. You need to complete the second sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first sentence. You must not change the word in bold and you need to write between two and five words, no more. If you write six words, your answer is wrong, so you need to think again. And contractions count as two words. For example, he's is he is. They've is they have, etc. Look at the example. Willie was the only one who didn't dance at the wedding. And the word you must use is apart. Look at the answer. Everyone danced at the wedding apart from Willie. Now, if you write at the wedding, you get one point. And if you know that the preposition that often goes with apart is from, and you write apart from, you get one mark. So two marks if all of your answer is correct. Always keep the meaning of the second sentence as close as possible to the first sentence. In this example, if you write everybody danced apart from Willie, well, it's a correct sentence and you'd get one mark, but there is information missing, isn't there? Because Willie danced at the wedding. So you need to keep the second sentence as close as possible in meaning to the first. Try to think of these keyword transformation questions as a puzzle. You're solving a puzzle. And it often helps to ask yourself what the question is testing. Is it testing gerunds and infinitives, for example? Is it testing verb tenses, prepositions, maybe? It could be testing phrasal verbs, superlatives, comparatives, grammar like so and such, or to and enough, maybe conditional sentences. 
Look at this question, for example. Your employer must sign this contract. What's the question testing? Can you see? Well done. If you noticed that it's testing the passive. Do you know how to use the passive? Now, if you know it's testing the passive, you just have to remember how the passive works in English and you can solve the puzzle and answer the question. For the passive, you use a suitable form of the verb to be plus a past participle verb. So, your employer must sign this contract. This contract must be signed by your employer. Let's try another question. What is this question testing? How long have you been learning to drive? What verb tense is that? It's the present perfect. Have you been learning? Present perfect continuous. Hmm. Could this be testing your verb tenses, perhaps? Yes, it is. If you change the present perfect to past simple, you get the question, when did you start learning to drive? Look at this next question. Pepito doesn't want to work for his uncle anymore. The word you must use and you cannot change is carry. What do you think it's testing? It's testing if you know a phrasal verb with carry that means continue. Do you know it? The phrasal verb is carry on, means continue. So if you knew that phrasal verb, you would get one mark in the exam. But wait, there's a verb in the first sentence, work, that we need to use. So if you know that verbs are always in the ing form, the gerund, when they come after prepositions, then you get another mark for changing work to working. Pepito doesn't want to carry on working for his uncle anymore. Two points. Could you take me to the airport Friday morning? Mind. Would Mm, 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 mm. to the airport Friday morning. What's this question testing? There's an expression with the word mind. Do you know it? We use it to make polite requests. It's the expression would you mind and it's always followed by an ing verb. A gerund. For example, would you mind helping me? Would you mind sending me the money? Would you mind meeting me? Would you mind phoning me? Would you mind picking me up at the airport? Or, in this case, with this question, would you mind taking me to the airport? Friday morning. Did you remember to include the object pronoun me? Me is in the first sentence and we also need to put it in the second sentence. That's the golden rule. That's an important thing. Always keep the second sentence as close as possible in meaning to the first sentence. Here's another question for you. What is the question testing? 
Do you know the answer? Can you solve the puzzle? It's testing comparatives. Much more, far less, far cheaper, cheaper than, etc. A Ferrari is much more expensive than a Ford. A Ford is far cheaper than a Ferrari. Okay, here's one more. What is this question testing? Do you know? If you see the word such or the word so, there's a good chance it's testing the grammar differences between so and such. I'm sure you've studied that before. With a noun or an adjective plus a noun, we use such to make it stronger. Such a good cake. We use so before an adjective or an adverb without a noun. The cake was so good. What's this question testing? If you've studied if sentences before, conditional sentences, you might notice that it's a third conditional sentence with past simple and would, or in this case, the negative wouldn't. And the answer, if I were you, I wouldn't go to Scotland at this time of year. Now don't forget to count the words you write in the gap. Were you, I wouldn't. Wouldn't is a contraction, would not. Contractions count as two words, so there are five words in total. That's okay. Five words is okay, six words or more is not okay, it's wrong. So here are some final thoughts about the keyword transformation exercise. Firstly, always ask yourself what the question is testing. This will help you to focus on the answer that you need and help you to solve the puzzle. Keep the second sentence as close in meaning as possible to the first. If the verb tense in the first sentence is continuous, try to keep the second sentence continuous if possible. If it's a perfect tense, try to keep the second sentence in a perfect tense if possible. Try to use the same words if you can. For example, if there's a name like John, don't change John to he or don't change Maria to she, just repeat the name. And write only two to five words and remember that contractions are two words. And answer every question. If you don't know a preposition, for example, guess. Just try. Make sure you write something for each question. And remember there are two possible marks for each question. So you can make a mistake and still get one mark. Did you make any notes as you worked through the questions in this lesson? If you had trouble remembering the difference between the present perfect and the past simple, or the difference between so and such, or maybe the third conditional if sentences, then you need to add those grammar points to your list that you need to revise and study. And do this as you work through the extra support material and practice exercise. Keep a grammar list, a grammar hit list, and study the grammar you're not sure of before the exam. And that brings us to the end of part four. These first four parts focus on use of English, mainly grammar and vocabulary. 
parts 5, 6 and 7 of the Reading and Use of English focus more on your reading skills. In the next lesson, we'll look at part 2 of the speaking test. What do you have to do in part 2 of the speaking? And how long do you speak for? You'll find out in the next video. And you'll learn some techniques, strategies and expressions to help you get a good mark in the speaking test. But wait, you haven't finished this lesson yet. Before you go, answer the quiz questions and check your answers. And if you make mistakes in the quiz, watch this video again. Also, do the extra keyword transformation practice exercise in the PDF support files. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.